Hi there folks, it's Mike here, and I have a question for you. How often when you've been programming do you use a variable like x or i, j, maybe y? Maybe some of these single letter variables that you often have various conventions for. And my question is, how can we get away with using that same variable name over and over and over again? So if you've written some code doing this and just want to know, let's talk a little bit about the rules of scope in this lesson. So what I've got here is a code that I'm just going to open up here for scope here. And I'm just going to create a blank C++ program as we've been doing so far. And give ourselves a little bit of IO so that we can write out to standard output our text here. And what I've got on the right side here is from CPP reference scope. And that's exactly what I want to talk about today. The scope or where we can use variables. So C++ is a curly braced language. If you've used something like Java or C or the D language or Go or many other languages, this is going to be familiar. But the idea is if I create some variable here, and I'll just create one called X here, and we should assign it. That means that X that stores this value seven or whatever value it stores is available between these curly braces. So if I try to refer to X later on in the program or somewhere else, well, X is out of scope. So let's just go ahead and compile this program to make sure that it works. And using C++ 17, not that there's anything specific to that version. I just want you to have that uh, habit. And we'll go ahead and run it here. And I'll make this just a little bit bigger so you can see everything on one line. Um, again, you'll see no compiler errors, problems, or warnings, or anything like that. But again, we could just create some curly braces here and define a new scope. And again, we say that this value here is locally available between these parentheses. So what if I try to change x's value here and assign it to some other value here? You're going to see this message here that says error, x was not declared in this scope. Again, it's found x. It sort of knows about it, but it knows that, well, when it reaches line 7, it's essentially going to be deleted or unavailable. So this brings up a few ideas. One, why even have scope? Why is it important that, well, when I create something like X here, that it gets deleted or is sort of unavailable between these curly braces? And the answer to that is sort of an efficiency question. Because by being able to have this scope here, I can say, well, I'm done with this variable and you know reclaim this memory. Because, well, X has to live somewhere. And we still have to talk a little bit about memory, but if it's useful, you can just think about this intuitively as you don't keep all the files on your computer, for instance. Sometimes you delete stuff and put it in the trash bin and you get rid of it to make stuff or rather make room for new stuff in the future. And it might be helpful for us to visualize this just a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of drawing just so you can see what happens in this program and you can understand the block scope rules. So the idea is, again, in our main program, and oops, let me make this just a little bit bigger here so you can see everything. There we are, is, well, we have, you know, this sort of scope here, and this is our main program. So let me just go ahead and highlight uh, this above here. That's between these two curly braces, and you can even draw them in if it's useful for you. So that means that any variables like index that we declare, um, or perhaps if I create some other things, are within this scope here. But if I create another scope here, like this int x equals 7, well, that still is sort of in its own scope here. It's within main here. So int x equals 7. But if I try to refer to x outside of its curly braces, which are you know somewhere over here, then we should get an error here. Again, it's outside of the scope and it needs to be reclaimed. So that's one way you can think of things in these sort of block scopes or between the curly braces where they exist. Now, you might have again used other programming languages. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, do an example and say, what happens if I create x outside of this function here? And I'll go ahead and assign it some value here. Uh, and let me go ahead and um, just get rid of this here. Well, if I run this, now this is OK. This is a globally scoped variable. This means we can access it anywhere. 
In fact, if we have multiple variables, we will know about uh, x uh, across, uh, excuse me, not multiple variables, but multiple files. So one, this can be very dangerous because you're probably going to use x multiple places in your program. And that's one of the reasons um, of many that global variables are not uh, safe. But just to make this a little bit more clear in our block diagram, again, if I create x outside of here, x equals 42. Again, that makes it available everywhere in our program, even in other functions or anything. In fact, it really doesn't have any limits on its scope because it's not around any curly braces here. So again, it's a global variable. And again, we try to avoid global variables. So globals are not good. And that's a general principle in many programming languages. There are a few exceptions where sometimes you just need to use them, and that's a design decision that you need to make, but be careful with them. And especially in this example, we probably don't need them. So let me go ahead and get rid of the global, which is sort of the no scope. Uh, in fact, if you want to scope this to just one file, there is something called static, but we'll talk about static later on in future lessons here. So let me go ahead and delete that. Now, why is it, though, that I can use x multiple times? My original question where we started with the video here. So I can have something like this here, which we said, well, just as a refresher here, if I rebuild and run this program, this was a problem. But what if I created a new scope here and said x equals 42, like this? Now, this isn't a problem because, well, this X lives within its own local block scope between these curly braces, and this one has its own local scope between these two curly braces. So that's okay. So again, just to recap, C++ is a curly brace language, and the curly brace languages mean where we're defining our scope. We don't want to use globals generally because that makes the scope too big, but on the other hand, we do need to think about where does x really need to be available? Just within this main function, maybe elsewhere, or maybe it's just fine to have it in these sort of little blocks here. In the next lesson, or rather in a future lesson, what you're going to see is me use things like for loops here. Um, so I'll use things like i or x and sort of iterate through elements. And again, that sort of answers the question of why can you have this variable multiple times? Because C++ is creating this variable only within this local block scope here. Okay, so let me leave it at that here. And I hope that'll give you a little bit more intuition about scoping in C++. Try to minimize your scope, keep things small, it makes programs easier to debug, and you avoid global variables. And we also know that having scope is part of efficiency, which we'll get into when we talk a little bit more about how memory is working, but again, this idea that, well, if we only need x for a small portion here, it's OK to get rid of it. And that's going to be efficient. And again, that's the reason we like C++. It's a very efficient, fast, and powerful language. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one.